And only God can heal our nation. The Republicans can't heal it. The Democrats can't heal it. Only Jesus can heal our land. Break off of us whatever the devil has put on us in Jesus' name. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. There's power in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Welcome today to Word Alive. I'm Pastor Bob Rogers. And really, in just uh, a few short weeks, we're beginning 21 days of prayer and fasting. Actually, it begins on the first Monday of January. That's January the 4th, and that's really right around the corner. And I would like for you to join me and thousands and thousands of other people as we begin this 21 days of fasting. You know, our country needs us to fast. Your family needs you to fast for them. Some of you are overweight, and honestly, a 21-day fast will really trim you up, I promise. And uh, this material that I have for you is really the best material in the country on fasting. Um, I started fasting over 30 years ago. I fasted anywhere from 50 to 150 days a year for 40 years. Uh, through the grace of God, and I humbly say this, that I've been able to fast 14 40-day fast. Let me tell you the hardest day on a 40-day fast. It's not day 40. It's day number one. The second hardest day is day number two. And usually when people fast 40 days, it's really not 40 days. It's 42 days. It's 43 days because you get in such an envelope of the presence of God that you don't even want to break your fast. I, I share a lot of the secrets in fasting, and I want to send this to you. It'll be a great blessing. Uh, I ask you just to send a very generous gift. Plant a seed for this fast. Maybe you could send $100. Maybe you could send $500. Maybe you could send $30. Whatever you can do, I ask you to give just as generously as you can, and we'll rush this material to you, the magazine, the book, the journal, it will be a blessing. But right now, let's go into our services where I share some of the power of fasting. If you take your Bible and hold it to the Lord, if you don't have a Bible, hold your hand up. But I want everyone to say with me out loud, this is the Word of God, and I believe it's true. It's a light into my pathway. It's a lamp into my feet. This is a road map for my life. Shows me how to get healed. Shows me how to get blessed. Shows me how to get to heaven. Today I shall hear the word of God. And faith comes through God's word. Nothing will be withheld from me. This is my year. In Jesus' name. Turn with me please to the book of Leviticus. And I want to begin reading today. In Leviticus chapter 16 and the 29th verse. Leviticus 16, 29. Would you say that please? Leviticus 16, 29. If you don't have a Bible, move over to someone and that does have a Bible and act like you're reading it even if you're not. But I want you to follow with me today. And this shall be a statute forever unto you. That in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls. Say that with me. You shall afflict your souls. And do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you. And ye shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. We fast for different things. We fast that God would bless us, that God would heal us, that God would empower us, and all that's good. 
But the Bible says here that this is a statute forever. That means that as long as time remains, this is to stay with you. This was not just a law that was in the Old Testament, but just as it was wrong to commit murder and it was a right to honor your father and your mother, it's right to fast. And when the Bible says that this is a statute forever, it was a statute for the Jews, but it's a statute for Christians as well. And when it says afflict your souls, that is a term, the word afflict, in every Jewish commentary that I have read, it means to fast. To fast and afflict your soul. The Bible uh, gives definitions, other definitions in strong concordance as to, uh, to uh, abase, to deal harshly with, to ravish, to humble. It comes from that he, Hebrew word, uh, ana, and it simply means through fasting. We humble ourselves to God and we cleanse ourselves from every sin, from every evil thing that may get a hold of our lives. What it is saying unto God is, I am withdrawing from food, even though it's a part of my nourishment, it is a need I'm saying to you, God, I need you more than even food, which is my sustenance. I need your forgiveness. I need your blessing. I need your anointing in my life more than anything else in the world. And sometimes what happens in people's lives, things get a hold of us. And it seems like God's still blessing us and God's still helping us, but we have an uncontrollable temper. We have issues where we're critical. We have issues that uh, get a grip on us. And because we go to church and we sense God's presence, we think, well, you know, God's, God's not concerned with those little things, but it's the little things that spoil the vine. It's the little things that really begin to destroy your life. And so God takes the time of fasting where we humble ourselves before God, and then God wants us to go into our own lives. He wants us to take a mirror, where we begin to mirror ourselves, and we see those things that maybe nobody knows. Maybe you've never said to anybody, but it's in there, and you know it's not right. Now, in the book of Nehemiah, or excuse me, in the book of um, Leviticus, just two chapters earlier than the scripture we read. It talks in 14, verse 37, And ye shall examine the plague, and indeed if the plague is on the walls of the house and in grain streaks, green and red, which appear to be deep in the wall, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. And the priest shall come again to the seventh day and look, and indeed, if the plague is spread on the walls of the house, then the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which is the plague, and they shall cast them into an unclean place outside the city. Well, what would happen when the children of Israel took the promised land? God said, you will eat of vineyards you didn't plant. And you will live in homes that you did not build. And you will take possession of what the enemy has and the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. So the armies, they take this city. They go in and there's a beautiful home and your family moves into that home. Now in those days, there were not banks. There were not savings and loans. And when people had wealth, they had money, they had cattle, and they went to battle, well, they'd take their money with them, they'd take their cattle with them, they would take their slaves with them. And so you'd have an army of 100,000 people, but you may have, with all the slaves and cattle and wealth, you may have 500,000 people because all their possessions was with them. And so they would take their gold and they would melt them down and they would make these idols that were really representations and they would attract demonic spirits and they would hide them in their homes. They would take the, the stones out and... They would have this golden idol worth hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
and they would stick it in there and they would hide it kind of like a safe. They would plaster over it. Nobody would know it. Maybe they have them in several rooms of the house. And now this home has been captured and your righteous family moves into that home. But there's demonic spirits there. There are these idols. And suddenly those uh, demonic spirits begin to begin to their power is released and things begin to happen. Sickness, trouble, accidents, just continual demonic things. And then there are these streaks begin to come on the wall. There are green streaks and there are red streaks. And green is a picture of death. It's a picture of blood. It's a picture of war. And then the green is a, a picture of eternity. So there's something that can hurt your family forever. So they'd call the priest, and the priest would come in and said, well, there's something in those walls. So they would, they would tear the plaster out, and they would go in, and they would try to find those idols. And if they got the idols out, then they would cleanse the house. The priest would bless the house. They would put the stones in. They would plaster, plaster it, and things would be okay. But sometimes they couldn't get all of them. They were, they were hidden, and they, they couldn't find them, and then they would tear the house down. Well, those are pictures of our families. Those are pictures of our sons and our daughters, and then suddenly something happens. We notice that our kids are losing interest in their studies. They're, they're, they're not focusing. They have some of the wrong friends. They're, they're listening to the wrong type of music. Their directions are going different ways. There's something's not right with my husband. What's happening is there are green streaks. There are red streaks. There are things that are happening in our home that shouldn't be there. And so through a time of fasting, the family comes together and said, we've got to heal our home. We've got to save our family. We've got to save our kids. We've got to believe God through miracles. And this is what this fast is all about. It's a time that we begin to refocus and we set the pattern for what's going to happen all year long. If you start out wrong, you're going to end up wrong. Have you ever tried to button your shirt and you butt, button the wrong button and by the time you get there, everything's all messed up? It won't work right? Well, it's the same way in life. And this is why we fast at the beginning of the year. Because if we set the course of our year through prayer and fasting, we're going to get blessed in July. We're going to get blessed at the end of the year because we started out right and we're going to end up right. Can you hear an amen? amen? And so what we're talking about, this is what we're believing God to do. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, raise your right hand, wave at me. That's the Holy Ghost right there. See there? Say with me. 1 Corinthians 10. Say, I love this chapter. Here's what it says in verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, do not, I do not want you to be unaware that all your fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. All were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now, this goes on to say that these were written for our examples. And so we look at this. They all were under the cloud all passed through the water. They were baptized into the cloud and baptized into the sea. Well, we know that the Israelites were the church in the Old Testament. That's a picture of the church. We know that Egypt was a picture of the world. And when God brought them out of Egypt, it's like you and me getting born again and God bringing us out of the world. And so, as they came out of the world, God baptized them into the cloud. The cloud is the Holy Spirit. It's the Shekinah glory of God, and it speaks not of just getting born again, but being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then they were baptized into the sea. Now, when they came to the Red Sea, Behind them was Pharaoh and his chariots. Those are demons. Those are the, the demonic that's had a grip on your life. Maybe you've had addictions. Maybe 
you have had hatred, you've had issues with pornography, you've had issues with all kind of things. Well, here comes Pharaoh, here comes the demonic, and so they enter into the water, and God opens the Red Sea. They go across on dry ground, but now the devil comes, Pharaoh and his armies come, and the water collapses upon them, and they are destroyed. And so the Bible says you were baptized into the cloud and now into the sea. Or in other words, when a person enters into water baptism, what happens when they are baptized, if they're taught to believe God, those addictions, those things that have gripped them, those things that have bound them, when they go under that water, it's just like the children of Israel when they were delivered and Pharaoh drowned in that sea. Well, our, those things that have gripped us, suddenly they're left in the water. You come out of that water and you're set free from cigarettes, you're cut, set free from whatever you're believing God to be set free from. So the Bible says the gospel that was preached unto us was also preached unto them. But it didn't profit them not being mixed with faith. Now this is what I have, one of the things I have uh, against infant baptism. It's not that I don't think you should bring your child to the Lord and have them dedicated because you should, but it is not baptism where you bury your sins. When a person gets born again at that age of accountability, they come, and if they're taught to believe God, when they're baptized, that, that filth and those things that have gripped them, even though Jesus has forgiven them, that's suddenly broken off. And the greatest deliverance service in the church is when people get baptized in water. But they've got to know that. That's why many of you, Maybe you got baptized when you were young or you got out, after you got saved, you got out into the world. And there were things that got a hold of your life. Sometimes, you know, the Bible says you have to go back and do your first works over again. And this is why that tonight, if you need God to deliver you and you've got things that have bound you, let's believe God that you come out of this fast totally set free in Jesus' name. Yeah. Come on, can I hear an Amen. We turn from our wicked ways. I want to read from the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 18. I want you to turn over there because I want you to see this with your own eyes. I'm not making this up. Nehemiah was a bodyguard. He was a cup bearer. And in those days the cup bearer usually was a pretty tough guy. He tasted the wine, make sure nobody poisoned that or tasted the food that the king would eat. So nobody would try to kill him if they did poison him. Well, the cupbearer would die first. And so he had great favor with the king Cyrus, and Cyrus allowed him to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the city walls. But when he got there, the people were corrupt. The, the priests were corrupt. There was so much sin that finally he called the people together. And... In the 18th verse, I want to read it, also day by day, from the first day until the last day, he read from the book of the law of God, and they kept the feast days, and on the eighth day, there was a sacred assembly according to the prescribed manner. Say, sacred assembly. That's what this is. They called the people, they read the first five books of the Bible over uh, a seven day period and now on the eighth day they called this sacred assembly in the ninth chapter beginning verse one it just keeps going now on the 24th day of this month the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and sackcloth with dust on their heads then those of the Israelite lineage separated themselves from all foreigners and they stood and confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. So they enter into this time of fasting, just like we're fasting. And they come to the conclusion, and now they begin to confess those sins. 
that they had been involved in as a part of their life, and they didn't even think anything about it. But you know, the Word of God will expose things. It will put its light on things. And during this time of fasting, God begins to speak to us in sometimes a way that we've never seen before. And so they confess their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. Now down in verse 30. And because of all this, we make a covenant, a sure covenant, and write it. Our leaders, our Levites, and our priests seal it. And so what they did was enter into a covenant, into a vow, into a public declaration, I'm going to live right. I'm going to follow the word of God. And then as you read, it tells what they did. They said, we're not going to allow our, our daughters and our sons to marry outside of, of the covenant people. We are going to tithe. We're going to honor God with our offerings. We are going to be people that treat one another with kindness. We're not going to have usury. And it goes on and on. The list goes on. And then it gets down into the 10th chapter in verse 29. Now they've made this covenant. And it says, And these joined with their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse and an oath to walk into God's law which was given by Moses, a servant of God, to observe and do all the commandments of the Lord our God and his ordinances and his statutes. They entered not only into a covenant that they signed, but then they said, God, if we break this covenant, may your hand come against us. They made a vow that they were going to serve God. They pledged their daughters would marry godly people, they pledged they would honor the Sabbath. They would keep the covenant of God. And it was a pledge of righteousness. Say that with me. It was a pledge of righteousness. And because of that, God turned the whole situation there in Jerusalem. And they entered into a revival that lasted 400 years. Now, I am believing that God is going to send a revival to America. Our country is divided. Satan has tried to destroy our nation. If our country doesn't have a revival, we're not going to have a country. We, we have a government that's non-functional. But we must have people turn to God. You have people of color that... that uh, whites against blacks, blacks against whites. It's evil. It's damnable. Amen. It's a sin. Amen. And only God can heal our nation. Amen. The Republicans can't heal it. The Democrats can't heal it. Only Jesus can heal our land. Amen. There has to be a revival, and revival cannot start unless we start with ourselves. Amen. We ask God to forgive us. You tell your wife, I, I've been mean to you. You tell your husband, I haven't treated you right. You, you treat people good. You, you, you get colorblind. You, you don't care what color they are. We're all God's children in Jesus' name. And if we will begin to have a revival in ourselves, we'll have a revival in our family. And then we'll have a revival in the church. And then we can begin to have a revival in our schools and in our city and in our nation in the name of Jesus. But it starts with us. And it starts today. It starts through fasting. And that doesn't mean we don't thank God and pray for this and for that and the other and believe God. But we believe, first of all, we are squeaky, squeaky clean. Now you have these things in your life. What it is, it's like turning on the faucet, barely turning it on. And here God wants to bless you, but you've got lust. You've got bitterness. You've got unforgiveness. And it stops the flow of the water. It would be like trying to fill this thing up with a little drip, 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 drip. But you start getting rid of those things, and suddenly the water starts flowing better. And then pretty soon it starts gushing out, and then this thing can fill up. It's the same way in our lives. You can have bitterness towards your family, but you're not going to see them get saved. 
You can have hatred towards this person, but it's going to hinder the flow of God in your life. It's going to cut off the blessings. It's a, a sin you can't afford. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's program. And before we leave the air, I, once again, I want to show you what we want to send to you to prepare you for our fast that's beginning on January the 4th. That's on a Monday, and we go 21 days. It ends on a Sunday. Now, I share with you a, a pre-fasting diet, how you can uh, go on a, a diet that actually cleanses your body so when you start the fast, you won't have headaches. There's a magazine with many articles on fasting and also a prayer journal that I want you to fill out every day because God's going to send angels to you. God's going to visit you. God's going to speak to you. You know, I want to share this story. We were fasting 21 days and there was a, a man that uh, uh, had lost his dentures. He had a couple of teeth in his dentures and he had lost them the year before. And so he went on this 21 day fast. He was an airplane mechanic and he worked on those big uh, commercial jets. And at the end of 21 days, he came to see me and he said, Pastor, he said, uh, I, uh, I swallowed my dentures. And uh, at the end of 21 days, I coughed them up. He said, I really didn't know what had happened, but I'd swallowed them. And I went to the doctor and the doctor says they had been lodged in my lungs for one year. And he said, if I hadn't gone on this 21 days of fasting, and he said, I probably would have never coughed them up. And eventually I would have had to have sur uh, surgery. And he handed me his dentures. I said, I don't want your dentures. You keep them. But I'm going to tell you, fasting does things not only physically in your body that will extend your life. Uh, we had a man whose hair was as white as, as uh, can be, as white as snow. He went on 21 day fast and his hair turned brown. He was a doctor. I said, I can't believe your hair has changed colors. He said, he said, I can't either. I think I've, it must have had something in my body and, and this fast reversed it. But that's an amazing miracle. You'll have miracles too. Why don't you plan to join us? I want to send this uh, material to you. Uh, the information's right there on how you can receive it. Send your generous gift, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week at the same time. We would like to make Dr. Bob Rogers' best-selling book, The 21-Day Fast, available to you for your best gift to the ministry. And during this limited-time offer, we'll also include the 21-Day Fast magazine, which will help prepare you both physically and spiritually for what God will do in your life during this special time of fasting. To receive this special offer, simply go to bobrogersministries.org or call 888-613-6080. Again, call 888-613-6080 and join thousands of others who are fasting for breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ, may there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.